Thank you for your interest in the Chick Low Profile Orthopedic Fracture Table. We've been manufacturing Chick tables for over 40 years. This is the latest version of our table. We've made some enhancements to the table that will improve surgeon performance. For example, the tabletop now will lift and articulate a 500 pound patient. If during the procedure it becomes necessary to activate Trendelenburg, that can be achieved by using the crank at the head end of the table and we can get 10 degrees of Trendelenburg. If during the procedure the surgeon needs to tilt the table laterally, that can be achieved by using the crank on the side of the table, which allows for 15 degrees lateral tilt in either direction. We recommend that two staff members move the surgical table into the operating suite, position it correctly under the lights. We'll lock the head end, so then we'll lock the center lock and the foot end lock. Now the table is secured to the floor. By locking the foot in lock, the table becomes conductive. Once it's there, the first thing we want to do is put on the leg transfer board. Next, we will add three removable side rails, one to the operative side and two to the non-operative side. These are standard US side rails, so any arm boards or any other side rail attachments will fit on these side rails. Once the side rails are attached and the patient is brought into the room for intubation, once they're sedated, the patient will be pulled down to the perineal edge and we will drop in the perineal post. There are two pieces to the perineal post. This is an offset bracket. It can be used to move the patient's hip off of the table for better C-arm access. The uh, bracket can be attached at the three o'clock position, the one o'clock position, the 11 o'clock position, or nine o'clock. Once that is in, the perineal post is dropped in. The patient is then pulled down tight against the perineal post. Using the traction block at the foot end of the table, insert the vertical traction post. And then using the rotation, rotate the hammer, the traction hammer, to the outside of the table. It is important during traction that the hammer assembly be all the way proximal to the patient. This will allow for maximum traction during the procedure. Onto the traction hammer, we will attach the traction boot itself. It is also important that prior to the surgery, the red crank on the traction unit be turned counterclockwise all the way forward. This will allow for maximum finite traction if needed during the case. The next step in the setup procedure is to attach the well leg support using a side rail socket and an articulating bracket that will be attached to one of the removable side rails on the non-operative side. The articulating bracket will allow to move the leg in the desired position that the surgeon requests. Into the articulating bracket we will install the well leg support. The well leg support is mounted onto a ball socket for comfort for the patient during the procedure. The final step in assembling the table for supine femur and supine hip repair is to attach the drape rods. Using the bracket attached to the end of the traction arc and using a second side rail socket, attach a side rail socket to the head end of the table. Into the side rail socket and also into the foot end bracket we will attach a drape adapter. What you see here is a typical setup for a, a fracture repair of the hip. The setup for repairing the femur is identical, except we always take the drape rods off and the surgeon may want to adduct across midline. Adduction for femoral surgery can be achieved by loosening the knob on the traction block and moving the, the traction unit across the arc. The traction arc is also designed to maintain the same amount of traction regardless of how much adduction or abduction is achieved. During the surgical procedure, the, the surgeon can raise the table to a height of 54 inches. 
to allow access to the hip or to the femur. Disposable perineal post pads and disposable boot inserts are also available. 